Alright guys, welcome back to Mass Effect Legendary Edition. And uh, we're going to go ahead and start this one off by trying to, or seeing what we can do with our uh, equipment and stuff. So, assault rifle, what, um, it's our armor, shotgun, pistol. Alright, so right now we have the Kessler 1 pistol, which does 90 damage. The heat sink capacity is 3.6, and the accuracy rating is 61. So, the Stinger 2 is better in every way. Let's see. Okay, so we just <laughs> upgraded that. Now, whoops. Upgrades. Uh, we got antipersonal rounds designed to shred flesh and other organic matter. These rounds are particularly effective against living targets, plus 20% damage to organics. Phasic rounds, too, plus 25% to shield bypass, but negative 30 damage. Uh, radioactive rounds, negative 18% cooldown reduction. Stand with minuscule amounts of radioactive material, inducing low levels of radiation sickness in targets. We got chemical rounds, negative, but plus 30% toxic damage. Yeah. Let's go with the chemical. And then combat sensor. Some enemies use jamming uh, to level detection or high caliber. Plus 12% damage, negative 20% rate of fire, negative 20% heat absorption. Sure. And then our sniper rifle. This one's better except for the accuracy. Oh, we only have one. Um, we'll save it for someone else, maybe. Grenades, shotgun. Hurricane 2 is better. Then assault rifle. The accuracy rating really sucks on that. But the banshee, the, the damage is better, but everything is worse. The Avenger 1, the damage is even better than the Banshee 2. The heat sink, but the am accuracy is horrible. Nah, whatever. Let's go with... Any personal rounds too. Armor, we can't use any of that. Biotic amp. Uh, can we do other, the other guys? Oh, it's our helmet. Maybe we have to go to these. Okay. So what is Tally good with?
Why can't I look at my squad anywhere? Like when I go to squad, it's just me. It's just me. Because I only have one sniper, so. I would guess Tally is better with the sniper. Striker. I'm not, not sure about that one. I'll give her an edge one. The heat sink is just so bad with the hurricane. You have a hurricane too, I guess. Well, actually, you know what? She can have this. I, can, I think Rex would probably be better with the shotgun, yeah. You can have the hurricane too. Did I give her the sniper? I can't remember. go. And Garrus, I think he'd be better with the assault rifle, I think. All oh, this is human armor, okay. Oh, she can actually wear some of the medium armor. Okay. Okay, so they're all equipped out. Man, I really wish, because I know on Ashley and what other dude's name is, I can upgrade him and I can upgrade Rex as well because we've leveled up since then. Oh well. I love the music as well. Some nice ambience. Do we check over here? Yes. Oh, there he is. Caden. That's the dude's name. Oh, I guess we should check in here as well. Yes, Commander? Is there something you need? How did you end up serving on an Alliance ship? I enlisted right out of med school. Earth always seemed boring to me, too safe, too secure. I figured the colonies were teeming with exotic adventure. 
I want you to travel the stars, tending the wounds of tough soldiers with piercing eyes and sensitive souls. <laughs> Turns out military life isn't quite as romantic as I'd imagined. I think we already heard But humanity this song. needs the Alliance if we want to keep expanding through the Traverse. Ever think you made the wrong choice? Some but there's something special about working on soldiers. If I left the Alliance... How now, well do you know the Lieutenant? I'd never worked with him before this mission. But he has an impressive service record. Over a dozen special commendations. Tends to keep to himself, though. Maybe because of the headaches. It's not easy being an L2. What does that have to do with it? Well, most biotics now use the L3 yeah, okay. Lieutenant Alenka. I should go. Goodbye, Commander. Yeah. We, uh, talked about that. Okay, so this thing. Wait, do we go back here? Yes, there's that's nothing. Apparently. Okay, so I kind of want to look at these first. While on the Citadel, you uncovered an Alliance patrol report. One of the patrols mentioned some strange activity in the Hydra system of the Argos Row cluster. Hydra system Argos Row cluster. Oh, this. places. Shit, I don't remember. Varmalis? I know it wasn't that one or that one. Thick atmosphere of nitrogen and helium, its surface is scorching hot and mainly composed of alumina with deposits of borax. The planet has an extensive network of subterranean caves formed over the millennia by volcanic processes. In these relatively cool areas, some primitive life has developed. Okay. Are we there? Commander, something you need? I have to go. Alright, see ya. <laughs> Alright, see ya. So I guess we can't go anywhere? If anyone has to take over for Captain Anderson, I'm glad it's you. I'm not sure about having non-humans on our ship, though. We're all on the same team here, Presley. With all due respect, sir, that's what they said about Nihilus. Look how that turned out. I'm in charge here, Presley. I decide if we have non-humans on this vessel. Yes, sir. Understood, sir. Speak freely, Presley. I want to know if you have a problem with non-humans. It's not that, Commander. 
Humanity has always handled its own problems. Saren attacked one of our colonies. We should be the ones to stop him. We don't need their help. This is bigger than humanity. Saren's a threat to every species in the galaxy. And I'll welcome anyone who wants to help me bring him down. I guess so. Maybe I'm just stuck in the old ways of thinking. But don't worry, Commander. This won't be a problem. How did you end up assigned to the Normandy? I signed up with the Alliance as a na- We were, we were at events. Elysium during- They had the numbers, but their ships were no match for an Alliance frigate. It was a slaughter. We couldn't even keep track of how many ships they lost. Carry on, Presley. Yes, sir. Paragon and Renegade plus two? What the hell? That's weird. Humanity and the Systems Alliance. Human diplomatic relations. Humanity has encountered many galactic species. Wars have been few, but mistrust is rife. Politically, the Alliance is a peaceful trade partner of the Turians. As a practical matter, however, there is simmering anti antagonism and bigotry between both populations over the first contact war of 2157. The Alliance enjoys good relations with the Asari though many privately believe the matriarchs are aristocratic and overcautious. Though humans know better than to uncontrollably trust any Salarian, their shared restless, reckless ways make them natural allies against the conservative Turians and Asari. The Krogan have no unified government, but individuals are generally treated as potential criminals, a reputation most Krogan enjoy living down to. <laughs> The Alliance has no formal contact with the Corians. Their migrant fleet has not yet passed through any human settled system. The Batarians are rivals for control of the Skillian Verge. They severed their treaties with the Citadel to prosecute a colonial conflict against the Alliance. Officially, there is no war, but neither is there any peace. So, I guess... We can't be here. Um, Hydra system. Oh, well, I, I'm actually at the wrong spot anyway. It's hi why did I forget Hydra? No, it's Sib. Okay. How much just to know where I can go? Like, if I wanted to do this, Hydra system in the Argos Row cluster and investigate. Oh, maybe we... Because we did this. Maybe we just go and read stuff. Cadrum is a small rocky world with a trace atmosphere of methane and krypton. Its surface is mainly composed of magnesium and silicates with deposits of carbon. Cadrum was the site of the warlord Shiagers. I'm gonna turn this down a little bit. Um, defeat by Turian peacekeeping forces during the Krogan rebellions. While this band was not especially powerful, Shiagar was a female warlord, and one of the few remaining fertile females at that. She had, through viciousness and cunning, parlayed her unique value into a position of power. Krogan males competed for the right to join her band and lie with her. When Shiger's, Shiagar's death was announced, vengeful male Krogan admirers near and far swore blood oaths against the participating Turian crews. In the end, several thousands of the Turian participants were killed in open combat or through assassination. To this day, many Krogan proudly proclaim that they have the blood of sugar. Okay. Oh, survey, okay. Turian insignia recovered. Scans of the planet Canrum revealed dangerous levels of radiation coming from orbit. Chief Engineer Adams conducted further scans and discovered the remains of an ancient warhead marked with the Parthia colony insignia. Well, we're not going there. Oh, we got some codex. Council races. 
Arcturians the Unification War. At about the time the Salarians and Asari were forming the Council, the Turians were embroiled in a bitter civil war, the Unification War. As it was later named, began with hostilities between the colonies furthest from the Turian homeworld, Palavin. These colonies were run by local chieftains, many of whom had distanced themselves from the hierarchy. Without the galvanizing influence of the government, the colonies became increasingly isolated and xenophobic. Colonists began wearing emblems or facial markings to differentiate themselves from members of, the, of other colonies, and open hostilities became common. When war finally broke out, the hierarchy maintained strict diplomacy and refused to get involved. After several years of fighting, less than a dozen factions remained and the hierarchy finally intervened. By that time, the chieftains were too weak to resist. They were forced to put an end to fighting and renew their allegiance to the hierarchy. Though peace was restored, it took several decades for animosity between colonists to fade completely. To this day, most Turians still wear the facial markings of their home colonies. As a point of interest, the Turian term barefaced refers to one who is beguiling or not or not be trusted. It also it is also a slang term for politicians. That's hilarious. Turian insignias. Keep searching until you have all the lost insignias. What? Okay, so we did this one. And then we did Canra. Meg Metgos. Message coming in. Patching it through. General distress call. The sacred angel medical transport. Critical system failure. Losing power. Emergency landing. Argos. Communications failing. Life support. Emergency transponder. Won't last. Please hurry. Huh. Warning level 2 heat hazard. Megatos is a oops, is a large terrestrial planet with an atmosphere of carbon dioxide and nitrogen. Its hot surface is mainly composed of nickel with deposits of potassium and heavy metals. It is a meteorological treasure trove with concentrated heavy elements con constantly being brought to the surface by volcanic activity. Metgos is inhospitable and dangerous and expeditions must be well prepared to survive any length of time. With its high mass, heat trapping clouds, and constant volcanic venting, Metgos seems well on its way to becoming a Venusian pressure cooker. World. Let's look at these two other two real quick. Thayer. Thayer is a large gas giant with traces of chlorine and sodium in its atmosphere. It also has a significant amount of water vapor in the clouds of its upper atmosphere. Thayer was struck by an asteroid at least 12 kilometers in diameter within the last hundred years. The superheating caused by the impact's atmospheric passage created a large bank of vicious storms along the equatorial band. Siba. Siba is a standard Neptune type gas giant. The upper cloud decks of its hydrogen helium atmosphere tinted a dramatic blue by traces of methane. Survey. Gas deposit survey. Scans from orbit have detected a large concentration of helium 3. Okay. Did that give us anything? Here, yes. Humanity and the Systems Alliance. Systems Alliance Geological Survey. As the human race expands its territory and raises the general standard of living, demand for industrial resources continues to grow. Many planets, moons, and asteroids contain a wealth of resources, but many systems have barely been charted, let alone thoroughly surveyed. Unmanned probes are one solution, but they are often lost to space hazards, unforeseen circumstances, or theft by salvagers. In recent years, 
Aegis, the Alliance Geological Service, has offered bounties to private individuals or teams willing to perform mineralogical surveys on the frontier. This survey data is made publicly available to further corporate developer development due to the cost of travel and the dangers of operating on hostile worlds. It is rarely a profitable endeavor. Light metals. Metals with low atomic weight are often used in the construction of spacecraft and vehicles. Heavy metals. Metals with higher atomic weights are used to construct equipment components. The platinum group elements are particularly useful. Rare earths. Most useful materials in this category are radioactives or magnets. Gases. Various gases are required to support all known forms of sapient life. Some are commonly used as fuel. UNC Valuable min Minerals. What is this? Keep searching for more elements and minerals as you travel. Survey any that you find. We found one of six gases. Oh my god. What in the hell? Oh, distress call. Find the down med ship in the hydro system of the Argos Row cluster and provide assistance. This is crazy. Let's save. I think it was Mechos? Or no, Kara. It was Mechos, okay. This land. I don't know if we're ready, but. Okay. I feel like having Rex and Garrus might do us well. Our tech strength isn't high, but, you know. Medal of Exploration. Okay, so we can't get into combat here. Oh yeah, let's update our squad here. Uh, since he has eight... We could unlock, um, but he needs special armor, I think. Hmm. Master Overkill. And then let's go into combat armor with him shield boost and then we unlock fitness with him which gives you more health oh debris anomaly and transponder signal so let's go to this stuff first Now I heard this was like the worst part of the game was driving this thing and that they, they fixed that for the most part.
It is still pretty hard to control them. Do we... I mean, there's a dead Krog in there. Do we touch it? Go. Oh, we can get out, okay. Oh, it's not a Krogan. Oh, god dang it. I didn't know it was going to do that. Terrian Insignia recovered. While searching the wreckage, you found a very old letter stamped with the Gothis Colony Insignia. Unfortunately, the text is indecipherable. Okay. Whoa. Okay, so now I guess we can go to the debris. So that is... Oh, I'm going the wrong way. There we go. Hopefully it's not like timed. Should we get out and look? Going out. Yeah. Oh, no, 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 no. Uh, that hazard thing at the bottom. I don't know what happens when that goes all the way up. I can't even make them look as hard. Heading to position. Okay, go away. Electronics skill too low. What? Oh shit. None of us have electronics. <sighs> Why 
Well, I really, really wish I would have known that. Oh, what about uh, Talia? I don't know if Caden has electronics or not. Okay. Okay, we got two things, but this only shows one. Survey mineral. Rare element surveyed. You have successfully surveyed a large deposit of thor thorium. Cool. There's a wreck. The signal must be coming from there. Yeah, it's a trap. Oh God. Trying to run it over. How running him over does like nothing. En route. Oh, we can return to Normandy. Okay, from this thing. But what about this? I guess that's just a decoy transmitter. Oh, okay. We did it. Well, 
Let's go ahead then. Return to Normandy and get Talia out. We need tech. That was pretty cool though. Okay, so we need tech. Yeah, she's all tech. That thing needs to have some good shocks on it. Okay, so we need to go left. Why is this still a question mark? No, we need to, we're going back to the debris. Oh, that uses a lot of army gel. What's it doing? Now it's going back down. Okay, so it's like a process. It goes up, it uses the gel, it goes down. Let's see what it does when it finishes this. Okay. Where? You guys are weird. All clear. Let's manually bypass. Hell yeah. Cryo explosive and a recoil dampener. Okay. Cool. Do it. Oh my god. I want this question mark to go away. Like, I know that it says it's a signal, but why is it still a question mark? if we know what it is. Okay. 
And I'm wondering too, is there anything like here and here? It looks like you might be able to get there. It says area map when nothing happens. Okay, so that was just... I don't know why that was a question. It just changed. Okay, it was just like a small bug or something. But, let's keep going out here, see if there's anything there. But maybe out here. I know we can't go in the red. doesn't seem like it so we'll go ahead and just return to the Normandy. We got pretty much everything we could. And so let's see, strange to head to the Century system in the Hawking Ada cluster. I'm going to have to read that again. Century system, Hawking Ada. Century right away. This looks nice. That look, this looks cool as hell. Still pretty loud. Message coming in, Commander. Big surprise. The Alliance needs you again. Shepard. This is Admiral Hackett with Alliance Command. We've got a mission for you. Oh, this is Lance Alliance Hendrickson. An officer named Major Kyle has set up a small compound in the Hulking Edda cluster. He's attracted a number of followers, mostly biotics. He's become an outspoken critic of the Alliance, and we believe he's mentally unstable. This could be trouble, Shepard. What kind of proof do you have that the Major is dangerous? Three days ago, we sent two Alliance representatives to meet with him at his compound. They've disappeared. We believe Kyle and his followers killed them. That compound is a cult, Shepard. They call him Father Kyle now. He set himself up as some kind of religious leader. You said his followers were biotics? Yes. Major Kyle never showed any biotic tendencies himself, though. I think he's just latched onto a group he identifies with. 
Many biotics feel marginalized or ostracized by society. Kyle probably sees them as victims who need his protection, and they see him as someone who will fight for them. Unfortunately, he's convinced them that the Alliance is somehow responsible for all their problems. We can't let him go on like this. What were those Alliance representatives going to talk to Major Kyle about? They wanted to bring him back to an Alliance facility for treatment. Major Kyle served us faithfully for many years. We weren't going to abandon him. Given his state of mind, however, he probably saw them as a threat. We're almost certain he had his followers killed him. What else can you tell me about Major Kyle? He used to be a model soldier, but something happened to him at Torfin. Too many Alliance soldiers died under his command. Couldn't cope with the guilt. His psych evaluations showed he couldn't handle the stress of command anymore. He was given an honorable discharge in early retirement. We'd hoped he would get better in time, but we underestimated how far gone he was. Now it looks like it's too late. I might be able to end this without violence. That may not be possible, Commander. We don't want a bloodbath, but Kyle is dangerous. I'll trust you to use your judgment. Hack it out. Yeah, that voice actor is uh, Lance Henriksen. He was in, uh, he's Bishop in Aliens, Alien 3 technically. He's in Terminator, um, Alien vs. Predator, and a ton of sci-fi and horror movies. Okay, not too many places here. Kink. Cantra. A terrestrial world of average size. Cantra's atmosphere is composed of nitrogen and argon. Its frozen surface is mainly composed of tin with deposits of calcium. Aside from some spectacular formations of water, ice at the poles, the planet has little to, to recommend it. Light metal surveyed. While scanning this planet, you have detected a significant deposit of cobalt. I'll do both of these, okay. Press Rop. Press Rop is the moon of Clendagon. It is a frigid, barren world with an extremely thin atmosphere of carbon dioxide and ethane. The crust contains plentiful deposits of heavy metals. The Alliance has opened bidding for the moon's mineral rights, but exploitation will be complicated by the system's proximity to the 5 kiloparsec ring around the galactic core. The ring is an area of intense star formation and too dangerous to safely travel. Presop's landscape is a nightmare of jagged overlapping ridges and geological shock zones created by some ancient disaster. This has not deterred a generation of illegal wildcat miners from attempting to exploit the moon's own mineral riches. Unfortunately, many have lost their lives. Looks like we can land there. Clendagon. Clendagon is an arid terrestrial slightly larger than Earth, but with a lower density that reflects its relative lack of heavier elements. The crust is composed of tin and aluminum, with wide deserts of dust fine sand that are easily stirred by the wind. Clendagon's most striking feature is, of course, the Great Rift Valley that stretches across the southern hemisphere. What is most fascinating about the rift is that it does not appear to be natural. The geological record suggests it is the result of a gla glancing blow by a mass accelerator round of Im unimaginable destructive power. This occurred some 37 million years ago. Tamahira Tamahira has a thin atmosphere of carbon dioxide and xenon. The surface is icy and composed of sodium oxide with deposits of calcium. It contains a few unremarkable metals, but mainly consists of rock. The presence of canyons and floodplains indicates that liquid water once existed, suggesting Tamara Tamahira had a thicker insulating atmosphere in the past. And then Therupto. Therupto is a typical hydrogen and helium gas giant with traces of chlorine and sulfur in its atmosphere. It has over 100 moons and an extensive ring system composed of pulverized rock, presumably the debris of shattered from shattered moons. Survey. Medallion recovered. While scanning the planet Therupto, 
You discovered a tiny moon with some odd readings. Further scans by Chief Engineer Adams revealed a destroyed escape pod. Your salvage team recovered the components and found a League of One medallion. Okay. Let's see, we got some Paragon and Codex. Aliens, Council Races. Salarians, League of One. Before they joined the Citadel Council. The Salarian's most potent military tool was a small reconnaissance team known as the League of One. Their primary training was in espionage and assassination, never more than a dozen strong. The team was adept at infiltrating the tightest defenses and eliminating all necessary obstacles. Only a few top members of government and military were privy to the League's identities. League members were no distinguishing, wore no distinguishing garments garments and held no particular rank. The only evidence of their participation in the League was a small medallion presented to each member upon induction. This secrecy was maintained until the formation of the Council, in no effect effort to dispel rumors and appease their new Asari partners, the Salarian Union released all classified documents pertaining to the League. The League of One was suddenly exposed and in danger of being hunted by enemies of the Salarians. Before any harm could be done, the team mysteriously disappeared. Most assumed this was a covenant, convenient lie to help hide their identities. But a few months later, the inner cabinet was murdered. Though there was no incriminating evidence, it was clear who was responsible. Realizing the threat posed by this rogue outfit, the special task group dispatched a team of hunters. When they didn't return, the STG dispatched ten of its brightest operators, operators with broad discretionary powers. Only two returned. They reported no evidence of the League. No further incidents were reported, and it was assumed the League was wiped out. Some recently declassified documents, however, have suggested there may have been a thirteenth member who eluded the Salarian military. Okay. Locate signs of battle. Okay. Slayer and artifacts. Keep looking for more. UNC Major Kyle. Go to the Century System in the Hawkins Air Cluster. Investigate Major Kyle and his biotic followers. Well, there was only one place we could land. And that was the moon. Press wrap, right? Yeah. Wasn't it? But we couldn't go to this one. Yeah. Okay, who do we want? Well, shoot. Considering this could end up in combat, Rex and Garrus. I would take Ashley, but she is only combat. Yes. Uh, it's a that's a hard one, because if we don't need combat, I'll take Garrus. I don't know. Anomaly, debris, biotic compounds, that's probably where they are. Okay, so the first thing we go to, oh, this isn't even on a map.
high. Can't shoot while we're in hand. Okay, so don't get in near the tentacles. How? How do you hit this? He just knows where we're going. just killed me. Damn it. Okay, if I would have known how to properly get out of his way, we could have got it. Considering people were uh, saying the Mako driving it was the worst thing about the first game, I don't know how people did this. Using a lot of my army gel. Chasing you.
Come on, come on, come on. Shoot. Unity restores dead squad. Okay. All right, Rex. Gotta get him with some more fitness. Briefly, but greatly increase your armor's protection. And then Garrus. Let's keep going with first aid. So does this thing like keep coming back or something? This make of his foot. Cause this spot isn't on yeah, this still isn't on the map. It's kinda weird. And we didn't get anything for the codex uh, for that creature. So Okay, so we can go right for the anomaly and the debris. Hmm, how do we get... We'll probably have to go that way first. Oh, we can actually just walk out here, okay. What in the hell? I mean, this way seems like it'd be the best. The way I'm going from the map, but... It looks horrible. Yeah, I can't even get over there. Uh -huh. Oh, maybe right there. No, because we have to go left.
you got it. Okay, so we have debris over here that's not even telling us about. On our map. But now it's not showing up on the map at all, unless the map you get as a person is much smaller than uh, the map with the Mega. Hmm. Well, it does look like you can drive all the way over there, so... How destroyed this thing is. Yeah, we won't worry about that for now, I guess. We'll go this way. Heavy metal surveyed, you have successfully surveyed a large deposit of gold. Let's get a little closer. <laughs> Can't seem to do anything with this. Oh. Get there. To me. Oh, I, I didn't know I was doing that. On me. How do I switch my guns? Why did it automatically have me on my sniper rifle when I'm specced into pistols? Form up.
Right. Really round. Whoops. How do I switch? Eat this. God damn it. That's where just switching to another one of your weapons should not be so freaking complicated. There. This is a private sanctuary. Outsiders are not welcome here. I have to seek Mitch Cow. I need to talk to the man in charge. It's important. Father Kyle wants nothing more to do with the Alliance. I want this to end peacefully. If he doesn't see me, people could get hurt. We won't let you take Father Kyle away. He protects us. We need him. The Alliance wants someone to pay for those murders. Let me speak to Major Kyle, and maybe I can find some way to help you all get out of this alive. Wait. Father Kyle will speak with you. Head to the building at the far end of the compound. He'll meet you there. Hey. I was hoping for. Especially since our vehicle's so busted, I doubt we could fight in that. But a cultist. Father Kyle says we biotics have to stick together. Just because we're biotics doesn't mean we don't deserve to be treated fairly. <laughs> Oh, I see. Oh no, he's here. To me. Come on, Rex. If you try to take Father Kyle away from us, you'll end up like those other Alliance soldiers. Father Kyle says we biotics have to stick together. Hey, I'm in the middle of At least doing that doesn't uh, trigger anything. Do we have a map? Okay, so this is the way to go. So let's go ahead and see. What the hell is this? Nobody cares about us biotics. We have to look out for each other. If there's anything else. Doesn't look like it. He seems to be in there, so let's uh The Alliance wants to wipe us out. Father Kyle told us. Malfunctioning object. Might as well. Armor plating and shield regenerator. Ooh. Nothing on the table. I am Major Kyle. I know why you've come. We have no quarrel with you. Why can't you just leave us alone? What happened to those other Alliance officers? The ones who came before me? They wanted to take me away from here. They wanted me to abandon this place, turn my back on my family. They spoke blasphemy. I did what I could to make their end quick and painless. I had no other choice. It was necessary to protect my children. Only I can keep them safe. 
Hmm. The Alliance sent me to bring you in, Major. Can't you see this has gotten out of hand? Don't you understand you're endangering your followers? I respect that you have come under a banner of peace, but I cannot do as you ask. If you take away their father, my children will be helpless. You ordered your followers to kill those Alliance investigators. You must face the consequences of your actions. Do you really want your children to suffer for your sins too? No. This... this was my fault. My children are innocent. Pure. Please. I never meant for this to happen. I... I'm sorry. You're doing the right thing, Major. Your children will be better off for it. Come on. Wait, if my children see you taking me away, they won't understand. They will attack and you will be forced to kill them all. You have shown me the error of my ways, Commander. Now you must give me time to explain it to them. It is the only way they will understand. Please, give me one hour. After that, I will meet the Alliance authorities at the gates of my compound and surrender without violence. I give you my word. I'm going to trust you. If you betray that trust, you and all your children will suffer. I will not betray you, Commander. Thank you for this. Your pilot can have an Alliance Command Patrol pick Major Kyle up. I just hope you know what you're doing, Shepard. You should return to Normandy, Normandy and notify the Alliance of Kyle's surrender. They'll want to dispatch a ship to take him into custody. This dude has nothing I can take in here. Well, we were able to do it peacefully, so... You and your cult of like eight... Well, maybe a little more, like... It's less than 15 people. Also, there was a big giant worm here. That I killed, you're welcome. Okay, but I'm gonna go back down there. Controlling this thing is so freaking weird. Um, is it this way? Oh wow, it's the complete. <laughs> it's the ass. I wonder if this gets repaired on the Normandy for free. Electronic skill too low? What? Oh. Uh, it's uh... Damn it. That sucks because it's kind of difficult to get here. <laughs>
Damn it, we can't walk up that. <sighs> I'm, I'm kind of wondering if it's even worth it at this point because... It's so difficult to maneuver with this thing. I will say that's definitely one thing they greatly improved upon in Andromeda. The Mako is actually pretty nice. And I remember if you couldn't get up something, you put it basically in what would be four-wheel drive for, for vehicles that we drive. Instead of like fumbling your way like this. mining vehicle. Discovery. The front of the rover is crumbled in from impact. A glance inside tells you the occupants, probably a team of illegal wildcat miners, are dead. Debris is still sliding down the furrows left by its tires, silent in the near vacuum atmosphere. Okay. Area secure. Ancient debris. Turian insignia recovered. Digging into the beacon revealed a piece of scrap metal, likely from a very old freighter. It was marked on one side with the Macadian outpost insignia. Okay. Oops. So that just leaves the debris that we need. Um, electronics for. Admiral Hackett. How do we do that? Message coming in. Ah. Patching it through. Admiral Hackett here, Commander. Your helmsman just forwarded your report on Major Kyle. We sent in a team as you instructed. Kyle's followers have disbanded, and the Major surrendered to us without incident. We'll make sure he gets the help he needs. To be honest, Shepard, I thought this thing was going to end in a bloodbath. I don't know how you did it. But you saved a lot of lives. Congratulations. What? Oh. We got nothing for that. All right. Well, real quick. Let's see if we can get to the debris and maybe even that other thing that we found, but it wasn't on our, isn't on our, like, world map. And we need, um, electronics, which... Maybe those two? Say, so I don't want, like, us to not be able to get some of the stuff we have quests... Medal of Exploration to... That we have quests for because I don't have electronics. Yeah, t oh, Tally is maxed out.
And he's got 16. Medicine. Let's go ahead and max that out. How close am I to another uh, 2,000? Well, a good bit. Armeco is still screwed. So, I think it's over here that... Is that? No, it's over here, I think. But let's go and see if we can get this debris. There's another question mark over there. See, because this is the thing I hate. It does not seem like you can get there, at least from right here. But it's like right there. Yeah, because you can't go up this rock. Never mind, it's right here. <laughs> Discovery, this cluster of prefab utility shacks have a distinctly ramshackle look to them. A set of rover tracks leads way over the mountain ridge to the southwest. Puts us right here, and then de the debris. Looks like we might be able to get at this. Alright, maybe I just need to be a little more patient with this whole... ...driving on these planets where you can't get to half the shit. I'm not 100% sure if fighting that giant worm thing is worth it.
Oh, okay. See, I was thinking it was gonna be more like, um... So... Either... I think it's over here. Was where the, uh... Thing I saw on the Mako map was. Because... So the biotic compound, yeah, it was like over here. But again, I'm not really... That's where that stuff was. Let's see if we can get up that way. say if there's an X on it we discovered it. Now I can't remember if it was down there. I should see it though if it was over right here. Yeah, okay. Rare element surveyed. You have successfully surveyed a large deposit of uranium. Okay. Well, that is everything that I found. And I'm happy with that. Okay, so. Anti-system anti in the Hades Gamma Cluster. Anti-system. Hades. I think that could have definitely been a little quieter. Um, one, two, three, four, five. So we have six. Um, what we'll do is read through everything and survey if we can, um, and then we'll go ahead and end it. So, Vimble. 
Vemmel is an enormous terrestrial world of mixed rock and ice with an atmosphere of methane and ethane. Its frozen surface is mainly composed of calcium with deposits of iron. Because of noxious surface gases, explorers are warned to use extreme caution. Survey, rare element survey, its scans from orbit have detected a large deposit of uranium. Ploba. Ploba is the second and by far the larger of Antony's two gas giants. Active scans by survey ships have returned tantalizing indications of massive solid structures deep within the atmosphere, too regular to, in pattern to be anything natural. Some believe Ploba is a Jupiter brain, a planet-sized supercomputer. Adherents of this theory have fruitlessly beamed signals towards the sunken megastructures, hoping to get the machine's attention. Others believe that an ancient space faring race disposed of their weapons of war by dumping them into the planet. The last attempt to reach and salvage Ploba's deep anomalies were tragically wrong and ended with a crew of 12 being trapped and crushed in the gas giant's lower atmosphere. Matriarch's writings recovered. You recovered a strange object orbiting Ploba. Chief Engineer Adams and Tally tried unsuccessfully to determine its origin. They did find one of Matriarch Dillinaga's writings stored within. Hunidor. Hunidor is a moderately sized ice world with an extremely thin atmosphere composed of krypton and xenon. Its frozen surface is usually smooth, suggesting widespread repaving by cryovolcanic processes, though no such activity is currently evident. Not much on that one. Edmus. Edmus is a standard hydrogen helium gas giant with traces of methane in its atmosphere. If Trevin's terraforming is successful, it is expected that a helium-3 fuel refining facility for the system will be set up here. Gas deposits surveyed. While scanning the planet Edmos, you detected a large concentration of hydrogen. Trevin. Oh, we can land here. Trevin is a modest terrestrial world with an atmosphere composed of nitrogen and argon. Its surface is mainly composed of nickel with deposits of silver. Trevin's environment is relatively mild, but the scarcity of water of, or similar enabling substances has prevented the development of any biosphere. Exogeny Corp. recently performed a test impact of a single water ice comet into the surface, the first step of a long-term plan to thicken the atmosphere and introduce water to the environment. A survey team is on the surface monitoring the geological and meta meteorological effects of the test impact. Most of the water released is still in the form of atmospheric vapor, but thick cloud banks have formed. There is every indication that this arid world will soon see its first rain. The survey team's progress has been hampered by frequent mechanical or computer failures in their GPS satellites. And lastly, I think it's last. Did we do them? Yes. A gecko. During the initial survey of the Anatia system, only a single flyby probe was spared for the small scorched world of a gecko. It revealed a planet unusually rich in heavier elements given its size. A gecko is a standard terrestrial with a thin atmosphere of krypton and xenon. Its crust is mainly composed of magnesium and deposits with deposits of cobalt and other heavy metals. Due to extremely rough cratered terrain, starships are discouraged from landing. Let's see if we got any codexes. No, but we did get a journal update. Asari writings. These writings belong to Matriarch Dillinaga. It looks like there may be other writings to be found scattered across the galaxy. So there's ten of those. So right now we have one, two, three, four. We have four things that are just um, like scanning the planets. NTS system, missing survey team. So there's only one planet we can land on. 
Let's do that and then we'll end it. And that was Trevin. It's Tally and Garrus. Yeah. I think those are the ones I'd want. Because Tally's maxed out on electronics. And Garrus has... I, I believe he has other stuff we would need. Oh yes, our Mako's fully healed. Okay, so if we look at the map here, we have an anomaly, a research base, debris, an anomaly. So when we come back, what we're going to do is head here and then try to go all the way around to that. Um, it does look like this will be an easier terrain to maneuver on, so hope you guys are enjoying it. Have a great day, and I'll see you.